morning, guys. How's it going? We'll go ahead and we'll get started in just a second. I'm going to give some time for people to hop on here. And then we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll get started in just a second. I'm going to pull up my slides here and, and get ready. Hope everyone's having a, a great Wednesday. Yep, it's Wednesday. Days are blending together. All right. If you guys can, if you guys can hear me, okay, uh, go ahead and uh, type yes or uh, or just that. Just give me an indication that you can hear me, okay. Awesome. Thanks, Alexandra. Anita, absolutely, absolutely. You are more than welcome. And then I'm gonna say this for a, a couple times throughout the workshop. I'm gonna kind of repeat myself as more people get on is, uh, main thing is I want you guys to ask as many questions as, as you want or whatever questions you have, don't be afraid to ask, okay? The whole point of this workshop is to answer all of your guys' questions and make sure you don't leave with, with any questions and whatnot too, all right, I'm here to help. All right. Hello, Lauren. Hey, Callie. Hollis. I think you pronounced that name right. Monica. Awesome. How's it going, guys? We'll get just one more minute and then we'll go and we'll get started. Just want to make sure that it's signed up and you can get in. I think we had almost. I think we had just over 50 people sign up for this. So I uh, want to make sure, give enough time for those people to hop on too. So that's kind of a good indication, you guys, is uh, uh, to let you know that you're not alone. All right, knee pain is super, super common. Um, yeah, we had 50 people sign up for this. So um, it's very prevalent and you are, are not alone, okay? And I uh, anticipate a lot, of, many of you will have uh, similar issues and pain points as um, other attendees. So don't, again, don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, I'm here to help because I guarantee somebody else is having the exact same type of pain that you're having. All right. Okay, guys, we'll go ahead and we'll get started. So if you are watching this training, it's because you want to learn um, how to fix your knee pain and be able to work out again pain free, then you're in the right place. Uh, for those that don't know me, my name is Dr. Ben. I'm a physical therapist and strength and conditioning specialist with ProKinetics Physical Therapy and Performance. Uh, we're located in Uptown Oakland. Oh, that's another thing too, guys. Um, go ahead and put in the comments where you guys are tuning in from. I'm always interested to see uh, where people are tuning in from. I know some people are in Sacramento, um, some people are in the Oakland um, Bay Area, um, and sometimes even people all over the U.S. Uh, tune in too. So I'm always curious if you guys could type in where you guys are tuning in from. That would be awesome. Um, so like many of you guys, I once too had knee pain and know how frustrating it can be. Uh, I've had doctors tell me I should just stop squatting. I should stop playing basketball. I should just stop being um, active. Um, and I've also had PTs trying to rehab me. This was before I got into physical therapy school. Um, trying to rehab me that I could tell that they didn't even really know what a squat was, how to perform it uh, correctly, um, and didn't really do any strength training or, or have sports background. And a lot of them blamed it on uh, the strength training I, do, I was doing or the sports. And at the time, I didn't have much knowledge because I hadn't been through PT school or, or anything like that and, and just took it for verbatim that they were right, that you know it's probably you know sports and uh, strength training stuff is hard on the joints. Um, and, and whatnot too. So I kind of like avoided some activities and now looking back, um, realizing this was actually false information, right? Um, strength training and being active and doing sports is actually great for the joints, right? Just done in the right ways, right? Um, and yeah, once I became a PT, this is a topic I studied extensive, extensively because this story is, is way too common and there are tons of uh, different types of people who uh, who are having this this similar knee pain that I was having, and just knee pain in in general. Um, and these are the types of people we specialize in working with, and have helped hundreds of people get back to working out and running pain free again. Um, not only that, but get them back to running longer and faster, and get them back to squatting and strength training and moving more weight 
um, than they ever did before because we worked on their biomechanics, did the running assessment, and made their um, movements more efficient. Um, let's see, let's see where everybody's tuning in from. All right, Berkeley, SF, San Francisco Mission, Los Rante, Culver City, Los Angeles, Oakland, Dublin. Awesome. That's great, guys. Yeah, see, everybody's, yeah, you guys are all pretty, pretty spread out. More people in San Francisco than I was anticipating. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, I want you guys to go ahead and comment on um, where, you're guys, where you're having uh, or experiencing this knee pain. Is it on the back side, back? Is it on the side or is it on the front? Um, the more I know about you guys and where you're having the, these pain points, the more I can kind of tailor this workshop specifically to the people that are attending and watching. Um, cause again, I want this to be super customized, uh, to you guys. All right. Um, so if you could, yeah, just comment where you're having that pain, whether it's on the front side or back, um, that would be awesome. And then once you guys do that, I also want to you to comment what you're unable to do because of it. Um, and how it's impacting your life. Like, are you having difficulty running? Are you having difficulty squatting? Are you having difficulty working out, rock climbing? Um, let me know on what activities you guys are having difficulty with because that gives, also gives me an insight on a diagnosis as well about what's going on, all right? Because different, there's different movement patterns that um, are required by different sports and different movements and exercise and whatnot too. All right, so we're seeing medial um, and lateral. Um, so that's in the inside, for those that don't know the terminology, that's on the inside and then also the outside of the knee. Um, outside next to the patella area only after running. Okay, Alex, so yeah, so that's um, most likely patellar tracking issues. And we're gonna go, I don't, I don't wanna just sound like gibberish right now, we'll be going on all over this um, as we go through the workshop too on what all these different things mean. Uh, back to the knee when I uh, have knee flexion, not in squats, but in deep side lunges. All right, Callie. So again, don't, I, I know you guys signed the liability waiver. The main thing is I don't want you guys to diagnose yourselves. All right? I don't claim to be trying to uh, diagnose over Facebook uh, Facebook comments, right? Um, I have very limited information, but I want you guys to give as much, I want to be able to give you guys as much insight as possible um, to what may be going on. So Callie, when somebody says that they have um, knee pain in the back of their knee, especially when they when there's more knee flexion so knee flexion is when the knee is bent maximally um, for those that don't know that's indication of some meniscus irritation um, it can be it can just be irritation it can be swelling it can be a mark partial tear tear uh, it's hard to tell right now based on that information but a lot of times that's what's indicative um, for those that may be also having experiencing some of the similar pain a lot of times that's meniscus irritation or involvement and we're going to be going over all this again too all right we'll be talking about what a meniscus injury is and and how it presents and what you can do about it too all right um all right so it's connor so this is a perfect example connor said it states that he's having the exact same pain that cali is all right um so a lot of times people are gonna have that same there's gonna be a lot of people in this workshop that are having the exact same pain um zach says uh IT band and side of the knee on long runs. So it sounds like runner's, runner's knee. And so that's um, IT, it can be IT band irritation. Um, we're gonna be talking about that too. All right, that's super common, something that we that we see a lot. Um, Renee's front side on the top of the kneecap. Cycling looks okay with a little pain, but running is impossible. All right, so when uh, on top of the kneecap, there's a patellar tendon um, that attaches at that patella, that kneecap or the patella. And I'm suspecting there's some, um, probably some uh, tendonitis going on with a quadricep tendon or muscle. Sometimes a sharp internal pain going up the stair. Okay, that can be, so how that can be a couple different things. Could be the kneecaps tracking improperly. There might be some arthritic changes going on too. Um, front outside kneecap during running and squats. Okay, so that can be a patellar tracking issue too. Pain on inside knee, um, stopped running and have to be careful with everything, yoga. Um, it's achy at night. Um, lot, that's Anita, that's sounding like uh, patellar tracking issues as well, possibly meniscus. Um, front of the knee, underneath the base of the kneecap. Um, okay, so a lot of this is, a lot of this, you guys are presenting very similar, which is great. All right, so it sounds like there's a lot of, I'm looking at these other comments too. Um, you guys are having pain with squats and lunges and running primarily. Um, and a lot of this is occurring on the front side of the knee, all right? And then also on the outside. So we're gonna kind of tackle and um, target those. We're gonna be talking about all types of knee injuries, but I wanted to cater uh, to that 
All right, and then Sean, Sean says he has the same exact pain um, on the front side that Monica is having. Okay, great. I appreciate you guys giving me that that insight. This helps a ton, um, and I'll make sure to tailor this workshop towards uh, you guys. All right, um, and then um, you know, also I want you to just mentally think about you know how many of you are frustrated that you can't work out or run the way you want to, um, or at the intensity of your workouts or runs um, are being impacted on you having to work around pain in one way or another. Um, it doesn't have to be, you know, knee pain um, with running or squats either. It could be shoulder pain. Um, there's, it's multifactorial, and there's a lot of different moving parts um, with regards to how interconnected the body is too, all right? So I just want you guys to think um, on everything and how it's kind of like impacting your workouts and your intensity and whatnot too. Um, so I want you guys to know this isn't your fault for, for having this injury, or um, if you went to the doctors and a medical professional just told you to stop running or stop working out, really didn't give you an uh, answer on, on a solution. This is not your fault. That's It's actually their fault. These physicians and chiropractors or massage therapists, physical therapists should be able to come up with a program to allow you to keep working out and allow you to get back to all the activities that you want to pain-free. There is a solution, all right? Um, yeah, luckily there's a solution and it's a solution we've helped hundreds of people find. And that's what I'm gonna be sharing with you guys today, okay? Um, so before we move on, um, you guys can keep, as we go along in this, this workshop, this is super inform and informal. I want you guys to keep asking questions as we go along in the workshop if something doesn't make sense, all right? I'm not offended. It's, it's not your fault for not understanding. It's that I didn't explain um, it well enough for you to understand, okay? So please uh, please ask questions if, if, you, if there's anything that come up, okay? Um, so a little bit of background about uh, me and, uh, the pro and prokinetic physical therapy. Um, we're, everybody here is a doctor of physical therapy who's also a certified strength and conditioning specialist. Our specialty is bridging the gap between rehabilitation and getting people back to exercising pain-free. Uh, we specialize in working with at, getting active adults and athletes in the Oakland and the surrounding Bay Area get back to working out um, and running and exercising uh, without having to take time off, without injections, medications, or surgery. Um, some objectives for today is we want to identify the most common causes of knee injuries and why they're occurring. We want to go over effective treatment of knee injuries and then also go over strategies for prevention of injury as well. And then most importantly, guys, I want to um, answer any questions that you guys have. That's the most important pieces. I don't want you guys leaving with any questions. All right. Um, so background on the knee joint. So there's 10.8 million injuries per year to the knee joint. And you guys are probably wondering why, why is the knee so um, exposed or uh, prone to injury? And a lot of this is due to the dynamic design, all right? There's very little bony stability, and this leads to increased reliance on the ligaments and the surrounding musculature for stability, all right? Um, let's go over a little, I'm just gonna go briefly over the anatomy. The anatomy of the knee can be very, very complicated. Um, I'm gonna keep it as simple as possible just to give you the bare, bare minimum. Um, of what you need to understand when we start talking about these different pathologies and why they're occurring, okay? Um, so what we're gonna do is I'm going to kind of stand up here so you guys and point it out on myself here. So we have the femur, okay? The femur is the thigh bone here, okay? This is the femur, okay? It's the strongest bone in the body. Then we also have the patella, all right? That's the kneecap here, okay? And then we also have the tibia and the fibula which are the shin bones down here and they attach up at the, the knee joint, all right? So that's kind of the bony anatomy, all right? Um, and then let's kind of get into kind of the muscles and the ligaments as well. Um, also, our internet's been kind of spotty as of late. If, this, if for some reason I lose you guys during this workshop, I'll hop right back on and join, join the live again, okay? Um, some ligaments. So um, the good thing is I don't, based on what, on your guys' comments, I don't think anybody's having an ACL injury or issue, which is a very, it's one of the longest rehab process um, of any injury within the human body, especially with regards to the knee joint, all right? The ACL is a ligament that's in the middle of that knee joint, okay? Uh, then we also have the MCL as well as the LCL. So the MCL is a ligament on the, si on the inside of the knee, okay? So that's, it spans from like about right here and then spans from up here. So if a lot of people are having knee pain on the inside of the leg here, that can be MCL. And we also have our LCL, okay? So that's right here, okay? 
here to here, okay? And so that can be, um, those ligaments are just responsible for helping maintain the alignment of the knee joint and making sure it doesn't, the knee doesn't collapse in or collapse out too much, all right? So it doesn't collapse in like this or go out like this, okay? Um, and make sure we keep that alignment, all right? Then we also have the meniscus. So the meniscus is, so we have our femur, all right? And then we have our tibia, our shin bone. And laying over the top of the tibia, as well as the femur, there is the meniscus, all right? It's kind of like a soft connect connective tissue to help uh, decrease any compression of that, that knee joint, okay? And so when we do rotational movements, okay? Or if we like, it happens a lot with um, football players, soccer players, and stuff like that. Um, so if people are like running and cutting and twisting, Okay, do you guys see what my knee is doing right here? Okay, I'm planting and I'm twisting. It's when we get the twisting motion that we can kind of um, tear that meniscus, all right? And a lot of times, yeah, meniscus are caused by rotational components of the femur on top of the tibia or the shin bone, okay? Um, and then we also have um, synovial fluid. So synovial fluid is, so for, for some, for those that aren't, have, that are having, um, that are having pain or tightness, especially in the morning, or like if you get, if you've been sitting for a while and you go to stand up um, and you notice there's a lot of, it feels like it's really tight and kind of uncomfortable. Um, that's because the synovial fluid has been um, kind of extracted from the knee joint. That synovial fluid is kind of like lubrication for the joint. And when we stop moving our joints, we stop um, getting that lubrication in the joint. And so when we, if we sit for a while, that's extracted, then we go to move again it's kind of, it feels tight and doesn't feel very smooth. That's the synovial fluid being extracted out. Um, and so um, when we start moving again, that's when we start kind of feeling better as well, okay? Because that synovial fluid is being placed back into, into the joint, all right? Um, and then we also have the musculature, all right? Um, so this is the muscles. Um, a lot of times people wanna blame uh, tight hamstrings or people feel like their hamstrings are really tight. That can be the case, but equally important is the quadricep muscle. So the quadricep muscle attaches kind of up here and then it goes down and attaches at the kneecap right above, sorry, right above the knee here. Okay, attaches right here. And so this can influence how that kneecap moves. All right, and I'll kind of explain that a little bit more in depth um, in just a second. And then on the back side, we also have the hamstring back here. Okay. And then on the side, we have the IT band, which is frequently irritated, especially with, um, with when we uh, see or working with runners that are, aren't doing a whole lot of strength training and they're running a high amount of mileage, right? And it tends to that IT bands tends to get, get irritated as well. Okay. So that's the gist of the anatomy. Okay. Um, again, it can, it gets much more complicated than that but I'm gonna try and keep it as simple as possible, okay? So let's get into the types of injuries. And I'm gonna kind of, again, kind of cater it to what you guys um, have put in the comments of the type of pain that you're experiencing. Um, so we talked a little bit, number one, about meniscus. That is uh, usually when people experience or have a meniscus tear or injury, it refers pain to the backside of the knee. So a lot of you that are having pain on the backside of the knee, like right here, okay? that can be meniscus and then it can be especially irritated when we bend our knee and cause more knee flexion like this okay again these are just some classic signs just because you have this type of pain don't automatically just assume that it's meniscus all right these are just general characteristics it's important to make sure you get assessed by a medical professional whether it's physical therapist chiropractor or physician you want to make sure it's properly diagnosed on top of that, it doesn't mean that you can only have one injury. You could have be, there could be potentially two or three different issues that are causing some of the pain. They could be kind of feeding off one another as well. Okay. Um, next thing is we have patellar tracking issues. And this is the, the, based on the comments, this is what I was seeing the most um, out of you guys based on the comments and something that's really the, the number one, probably the top injury that we see definitely for knee injuries is patellar tracking issues. All right. So patellar tracking issues are when 
so our kneecap, so I'm moving my slides out of the way so I can make sure I see the camera, make sure you guys can see everything that I'm kind of describing here. All right, so we have our kneecap, all right? As we, our kneecap, my kneecap is sitting right here, right? but when I stand up, when I stand up, so my kneecap is here, but as I bend my knee, my kneecap actually has to drop down, okay, into a groove here. And if, and if my quadricep, we talked about earlier how that quadricep attaches at the top of the kneecap, all right? If that quad is really, really tight or being overworked and gets tight, it's gonna, de it's gonna limit the ability of that kneecap to drop down into this groove, okay? And what it's gonna do is actually, it's just gonna pull it up, okay? And this kneecap's actually gonna sit up a little bit higher. And there's a, a track that this kneecap has to travel in. And if that's tight, if the quad is tight, it's gonna increase the compression underneath the kneecap. So a lot of you guys had stated that you had some pain or pain that felt kind of deep in the joint or underneath the kneecap, it's most likely some irritation under that kneecap, okay? And so um, one thing that you can do for that is one, figure out why is that quad getting so tight? And then two is loosening up the quads. And we're gonna be talking, and that's a lot of the exercise we're gonna be going over today is how to loosen up this quadricep muscle. So it's responsible for a lot of knee pain, okay? Um, and on top of that, what can also cause patellar tracking issues and it relates to um, some of the things that you, uh, other people are experiencing is that pain on the outside of the leg or on the IT band. When that IT band gets tight, that IT band also t attaches at the side of the kneecap, all right? And when that IT band is tight because it attaches at the kneecap, it's gonna pull this kneecap over to the side, okay? And we, remember we talked about how there's a groove that this has to travel within. And if this is tight, it's gonna pull that kneecap over to the side. And then on top of that, if we have a tight quad, what's gonna be doing is kind of pull this kneecap over this way and kind of off the tracks. And we can get irritation and rubbing underneath that kneecap and on the side of the knee, okay? So that's kind of what leads to patellar tracking issues, all right? But we gotta understand, you're probably like, well, why is this happening to me? Why am I experiencing patellar tracking issues, all right? So the symptoms and why you're experiencing it are multifaceted, all right? It's, you're experiencing the pain because of tight quads and tight IT bands. So what I hear a lot is people that, um, what they'll do is they'll just go ahead and um, foam roll and stretch the, the quad, um, which will give them, and they'll get massages and stuff, which will give them temporary, temporary relief. Um, and then they feel like they just have to keep doing this foam rolling and stretching to get the pain relief. Um, however, what they're doing is not doing is getting to the root cause and figuring out why is why are these quads getting so tight? Why are these IT, this IT band muscle getting tight? And a lot of times it's because, um, like I said earlier in the workshop, is the body likes stability and, and the knee joint doesn't have a whole lot of bony stability. So there's increased reliance on ligaments and musculature, right? And so if the knee joint isn't getting stability for the muscles it's supposed to, it's gonna start reaching for any and every muscle to get stability, whether that's the IT band or the quad, it's gonna start asking the quad and IT band to provide two, more stability than what it's designed to, and then it starts getting irritating and get tight, and that's what causes pain, all right? So you gotta make sure we get to the root issue and figure out why is the IT band getting so tight and is it muscular imbalances and, and whatnot too, okay? So hopefully that makes sense, all right? And we also have the, then we also have IT band pain, Okay, and so IT band pain also is usually pain on the side of the knee here. Okay, it kind of runs down here and attaches at the knee. Okay, and so a lot of times when we are running, and if we don't have the proper glute strength, our knee, what's actually going to happen is our knee is going, when we run, that knee is going to collapse in. Okay, or if we're doing squats, I know if some of you guys have probably seen people in the gym or just doing air squats and their knees are collapsing in like this whenever they do a squat, okay? Every time they do that, like a squat like this or they're running, okay, and that knee collapses in, guess what that's doing? Remember where we talked about that, where the IT band attaches? Attaches from here to here, all right? And so when that, when that knee collapses in repeatedly, guess what's doing? It's repeatedly stretching this IT band. Okay, and it gets really irritated, okay? 
And so that's what's causing a lot of the IT band pain is that knee collapsing in, all right? All right, a lot of times that's due to glute weakness, all right? The knee joint itself is very, very rarely ever responsible for the pain it's experiencing. It's usually what's happening below and above the joint. What I mean by that is what's the, what are the feet doing? What are the hips doing? Because those have to have the proper stability and strength to support that knee because that knee is in the middle of both of those joints, okay? So what I want you guys to do is if I have, that this also plays a factor into the feet too. If my foot is weak, okay, and I'm, I started getting my foot collapsing in, guess what's gonna happen to that knee? That knee's gonna follow too, right? I'm not moving my knee, I'm just moving, collapsing the arch of my foot, okay? And you guys see what's happening at this knee joint, right? And so you can imagine how now my alignment of my knee is all thrown off. And that's not the knee's fault, that's all what's happening down at the foot, okay? And again, vice versa, vice versa is, if the hip isn't strong enough and providing that stability, it's gonna work its way down the chain into the knee and sometimes even cause some foot pain as well, okay? So a lot of times I don't want you guys to get too, and this is something that uh, I'm asking a lot of you guys because this is something that a lot of medical professionals don't even do, is they get so solely focused on what's happening at the, at the knee joint and the pain that's, that's going on there that they forget to even take a look at the, you know, the hip as well as the foot, okay? All right, so don't get too zoned in on just the knee, okay? The body is very highly interconnected, okay? Um, and then some of you also, I think there's one or two people on here that stated that they're having some pain that was kind of deep inside their joint, and that can be osteoarthritis, right? So this is, hap this is something that is natural and normal. As we age, we start getting osteoarthritis or that synovial, we talked about that synovial fluid, and that meniscus, Okay, that it can decrease and not provide as much stability or cushioning. And so what we do is we get what's called, what physicians and other medical professionals will say is bone on bone, okay? It sounds really bad. It sounds really worse than what it actually is. Um, people are like, how can, you, how can you fix osteoarthritis if it's not reversible, okay? Osteoarthritis is not reversible. However, I want you guys to see how we can actually offload where that bone on bone is occurring. Okay, so if I have somebody, this is something we see a lot too, is we have a lot of people that come in and they are planning to get surgery, like they're, they're older, they're in, their, they're in their 60s, 70s, and they're thinking about getting a knee replacement. And they wanna try and avoid that as long as possible. So the first thing I have them do is usually, I'm like, okay, show me how you squat. And what I see is a lot of times it's like this. Okay, they're squatting like this. All right, the squat's supposed to look like this, right? Do you guys see how everything is in alignment here? Okay, you guys can see how this can change the biomechanics of what's happening, okay? So a lot of times people will state that they have pain on the outside of their knee, okay, when they have osteoarthritis. Well, no wonder because when they collapse in like this, there's compression happening on the, out, on the um, outside of the knee here, okay, and can cause rubbing here. Guess what, when I have them start squatting properly and waking up the right muscles and strengthening up the right muscles to allow them to do so, now they squat like this, guess what, now they're doing it pain-free, right? The reason for that is because we changed the alignment of the knees and the biomechanics of how the body's operating and it's operating more effectively and efficiently like it's supposed to. If I squatted like this and ran like this, you know where my knee was collapsing in, I'd, get, I'd have an increased risk for osteoarthritis down the road too, right? So if we can get people to squat and run like they're supposed to, it decreases the stress on that knee joint and leads to further, osteo of further osteoarthritis. And on top of that, gives, even though we're not reversing the osteoarthritis that somebody may have, we are offloading that site that has osteoarthritis. And by offloading it, now we get pain relief. And now people don't need surgery. Did we, yeah, we didn't reverse the osteoarthritis. We just offloaded it, okay, and got the pain relief, okay? Um, hopefully that makes sense, guys. Go ahead and, again, comment if, if we're going over a lot of information today. I know it's kind of complicated and, and whatnot, too. Um, so if something doesn't make sense, go ahead in the comments and, um, and just comment whether it makes sense or not. And I'm happy to answer any questions that, that you guys have, too, okay? Um, then we also have quadricep strains and also hamstring strains, right? And so this is just where the muscle gets overworked or... Um, we ask that muscle to do a little bit more um, than, it's, than it was designed to, okay? 
Um, and then the last thing we're gonna talk about is patellar tendonitis. So patellar tendonitis is usually pain on the front of the knee, okay, right below the kneecap, okay, right in here. This is what, this is what I had, okay, when I was playing a lot of basketball and didn't, and wasn't doing the right strengthening, we'll have pain kind of right in here. So this uh, patellar tendon attaches right here, kind of, if you guys feel um, your, your shin, okay, there's kind of like a little bit of a bump. That's where it starts, and then it comes up and attaches at the bottom of that kneecap. And so if that quad is really tight, okay, it can go ahead and cause that kneecap to track improperly and then also subsequently cause increased stress on this patellar tendon, leading to patellar tendonitis. Itis means inflammation and pain, okay? And so if we can, a lot of times if we get this kneecap to track properly, all right, um, then it decreases the stress placed on this patellar tendon, okay? And again, patellar tendonitis can happen too because we're asking it to that we're asking that ligament to do too much work. We're not utilizing our hamstrings and our glutes like we're supposed to, and so this patellar tendon and this quad and the muscles on the front side of our legs get overworked. Okay, and what I mean by that, by being overworked, like you guys are probably wondering, like, well, what movements, um, you know, what movements should I be doing to to allow me to get back to be able to, um, you know, offload the quads and strengthen up the hamstrings and the glutes, all right? So I'm gonna kind of tie it back to squats, all right? So I'm gonna kind of show you guys what a proper squat pattern should look like, okay? Because I see this done incorrectly all the time and it's leading to a lot of injuries, okay? So what I see a lot is, especially with people that have low back pain, they're very, very afraid of leaning forward, okay? Because they have back pain, all right? However, so what happens is they start squatting like this. Okay, do you guys see how upright my torso is? And I'm just kind of like jetting my knees forward. All right, I'm gonna kind of tilt this camera down so you guys can see my feet a little bit better too. All right, so what happens is now the knees are going way past the toes, okay? And now the quads, this is what a squat looks like if you're utilizing your quads a lot, okay? I'm exaggerating, this is about as quad dominant of a squat you can get, okay? Another variation of this of where you're actually still utilizing too much of your quads is this. Okay, even though I'm leaning forward, this is still too much quads. This is still a too much, too quad dominant squat. Uh, I'm anticipating a lot of you that are having pain with squats are doing something similar like this. Okay, so you're probably, okay, Ben, what should a normal or regular squat or normal squat look like? So we want to make sure we're getting a hip hinge in. What I mean by that is hinging at the hips. Okay, so we're unhooking our knees. And then from there, we're pretending that we're going to sit down into a chair. Do you guys see how my knees aren't going past my toes? Okay, now I'm using my glutes, I'm using my, my glutes and I'm using my hamstrings to produce the movement and the quads aren't, and because we're using the quads and the ham, or sorry, the glutes and the hamstrings more, now the quads don't have to work so much. If they're not working so much and working overtime, they don't get tight and now we don't have to foam roll. We don't have to be, um, you know, stretching as much. Okay, so you guys are like, well, how can I kind of teach myself how to do this? So I would encourage you guys to do it, get a chair all right, so if I'm going to do a quad dominant, if I'm going to do a quad dominant squat, I would miss this chair completely. Do you guys see if I kept going down, I'd pretty much like hit right at the edge. Now watch what happens when I use my glutes and my hamstrings. Now look what happens. Do you guys see how I hit the very back part of the chair? That's me using my glutes and my hamstrings. Okay, back, 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 and sitting down. And back up. Okay, if I do a quad dominant, I'd miss it. If I kept going down, I'd miss that chair. Okay. So you guys can just use a, a chair to place behind you and go ahead and kind of sit back into that. Okay. All right. Um, and is asking, is the inside of the knee a part of the patellar tracking? Yes. Yes. So I needed to answer your question. Simple answer is yes. I'm going to go a little bit more in depth with that. So there can be also, it's not always just the IT band. I'm not saying that it can only track laterally or pull that kneecap off the side, it can be tracking improperly on the inside as well. It could be moving in this way, okay? And we can have pain over here as well. A lot of times with that, if I, if somebody says they're having kind of pain on the inside of it or um, in the inside part of the knee, um, sorry, Neil, is, are you asking if it's um, like in, on the inside part of the kneecap or the knee joint, like on the outside here? Most likely if it's kind of like in the, like on the very inside, like here, 
A lot of times it's not patellar tracking issues. It can be meniscus, okay? It can be the MCL as well, okay? I'm not completely ruling out the kneecap, okay? Kneecap issue, but if you're having more pain on the inside part of the kneecap, then that can be, yes, patellar tracking issues. Hopefully that makes sense. I need a, more on the thigh by the joint. Okay, so that could be also more on the thigh, kind of like up here, Anita. Okay, if this is if it's up here more, that's your quad muscle. Okay, you could have be having some, um, you could have like a quad strain. Okay, that would be my guess. Okay, um, Susie says that already helps so much. Wow, I've been doing squats wrong. Thank you. Yeah, Susie, this is it's again. This isn't this isn't your fault. You just haven't had somebody to teach you the right way. This isn't something I had to go like I had to go to PT school to learn this. All right, there's a lot of trainers out there like. There's also a lot of trainers and there's also a lot of physical therapists that out there that don't know how to squat properly. All right, this is this is not this is not your fault. Okay, but I'm glad that's that's helpful and and uh, and beneficial so far. Okay, um, yeah, in the back. Okay, so neither that can be if it's pain on the back, it can be that meniscus as well. Okay, could be kind of again, it could be two separate issues. All right. Um, okay, so those are the main those are the main injuries. Okay. Any questions on those guys? And then we're gonna kind of get into treatment, okay, and what that should look like. Okay, this is your guys' chance to ask, you know, questions. We're gonna kind of take a little bit of a break here, let the questions come up and come in as they as they come up. All right. Um, I'm just gonna kind of go back and see if there's any other things that I missed in the comments. Um, Monica saying front side squats are uncomfortable and hiking downhill has become a little painful. Monica, I'd see if you could do the, retry and do the squat and see if the way I taught you makes it uh, more tolerable or if it makes it worse or makes it, um, or there's no difference, okay? Um, and then hiking downhill, okay? When we go down a hill, our quads have to, our quads are what's decelerating our movement and what's restricting us from falling down the hill, essentially, okay? Um, and so I'm anticipating, uh, Monica, yours is a lot of, um, a lot of this is being caused by quad tightness and exercise we're going to go over today are going to help a lot with that quad tightness. Um, can patellar tracking issue lead to the knee getting stuck and then popping back in place? Um, Alex, yes. Yeah, so um, a lot of times when it feels like you, what it sounds like is, um, sounds like there's more of a dislocation happening. Okay. Um, and what's happening is that kneecap actually has too much wiggle room. Okay. It doesn't have enough stability. Uh, when the knee doesn't have enough stability from the surrounding musculature, such as the quads and the hamstrings and, and the glutes and whatnot, this can lead to kneecap dislocation, um, if that makes sense. That's a little bit more complicated because um, there can be, it's kind of multifactorial with things. Okay? Um, I've always thought that it might be a bucket handle meniscus tear, but it's in the same knee as my outside patellar pain when running. Okay. So yeah, I think there's a lot, there's uh, multiple injuries that are kind of going on here, Alex, um, with things because um, you're having pain in, in multiple different kind of areas and presenting it a couple different ways. Um, Kate says, I'm found, I've found that um, doing lateral lunges makes my knee act up. Is that due to lack of strength in my quads? Kate, actually that's most likely due to a lack of strength in your uh, glutes, okay? So when we go to, if somebody's doing lateral lunges, Okay, it can also that you might not be getting enough hamstring and glute activation. Sorry guys for keeping all this around. I don't claim to be a film director by any stretch of the imagination. All right, so when we do, when we do lateral lunges, it's the same movement that we kind of have to do with a squat. We can do uh, quad dominant, okay, lunges, or we can do glute and hamstring dominant lunges the way like we're supposed to. What I mean by that is when we go to do a lateral lunge, I could stay very upright, Right, do you guys see, again, my video, my camera movement is not the greatest, I apologize for that, all right? So if I stay very upright like this and I do lunges like this, I'm gonna have probably some knee pain, especially if, do you guys see, watch when I go, like I'm showing you the, like, the absolute worst, okay, thing I've ever seen with regards to lunges. I doubt many of you, if any of you are doing it this bad, but I'm exaggerating so you guys can see. See again, you guys have, don't have like a trained eye to catch up on these things, catch these things, so I'm making it very, very evident, okay? So watch this knee. When I go to a lateral lunge, do you guys see how my knee's collapsing in? I'm staying very upright and then I'm pushing off, okay? Like my knee, my knee hurts doing this, all 
all right? And I don't even have an injury. It's just because I'm doing it wrong, okay? Um, what we need, what it should look like is keeping this knee out and then we're unhooking our knees and then we're sinking our hips back and going down. Okay, do you guys see the difference between this, okay? Between this and this, okay? See how upright? I'm trying to see, if, see how I'm doing like lunges like this? Okay, my body is very upright. What it should look like is unhook the knees, sink the hips back, pretend I'm sit, sitting down, and I'm going up, right? You guys see how I'm hinging at the hips? Okay, so a lot of times if that knee is collapsing in, especially with lunges, lunges are more difficult than squats with regards to knee stability, okay? Because we're more in, we're more on just one, we're putting more weight on one leg than another, okay? With squats, we've got that weight equally dispersed. We're asking more of that knee and more demands and stability for that, that knee joint when we do lunges, okay? So if our glute, okay? I didn't describe to you guys about glute strength and why that's important. So we have our glute, and this is, and he, this is gonna kind of explain when I'm talking about why it's not actually a quad weakness or a hamstring, it's actually the glute. So the glute is responsible for pulling or kicking the leg out to the side, okay? However, if we're in a squat position, it's responsible for pulling these knees out, okay? So if this is what it would look like if my, we, my glutes were weak and weren't doing their job, the knees are gonna collapse in, okay? If they're working and contracting, they're actually gonna pull the knees out, okay? And the same thing with lunges. They're gonna allow that knee to stay out, okay? And not collapse in like this, okay? Hopefully that makes sense, guys. Again, this is kind of higher, higher level stuff, and I know a lot of you guys don't have backgrounds in this, but I'm trying to make it as simple as possible. Um, does that make uh, sense, Kate? I'm anticipating it's probably uh, due to a lack of uh, glute strength, and then just also motor programming with knowing how to do the lunges um, properly and getting those glutes and hamstrings, okay? Um, what about pain only when the knee is bent during rest? Worse during periods of running uh, training? Totally fixed if I lock my knee and walk around a while. All right, Heidi, so that's, that can be, um, that can be like quad tightness again, okay? Because when we keep our knee really bent, okay, for a long period of time, that quad can get tight. Um, and if we lock out our knees, now our quads don't have to work to provide any stability. Hopefully that kind of makes sense. All right, Kate, good. Glad that, glad that makes sense. Awesome. All right, guys, you guys are asking great questions. I love it. I love it. Hey, okay, keep them coming in. All right, so I'm going to move kind of into treatment. And again, you guys can just keep having the questions come in. And I'll address them as, as they do. All right, so first step of treatment is we need to find and understand the root cause of this. You know, we can do, we can do all the treatment that we want. But if you keep going back to doing the squats improperly with pro improper form, or you're doing lunges improperly, you're running, your running form and mechanics is messed up, you can do all, we can do all the exercise we want. It's gonna get, you're gonna get, you make progress, but it's gonna be much, much slower. Okay, we gotta get to the root cause of it. And is it because you're sitting quite a bit throughout the day? Is it the way, you know, your movement patterns, you know, with, like I said, with running, squatting and lunges and stuff like that. Um, and then second phase is, you know, if this is an injury that just happened, we need to make sure we control the swelling and make sure that, because when we have swelling within joints, it leads to pain and inflammation. All right, so what we can do is to control swelling. If it, first, if it just happened, if it's an acute injury and happened within the first 24 to 48 hours, we can throw ice on that, all right? And decrease that swelling, decrease that pain, right? Um, and then we need to restore range of motion after that. Okay, if we don't control that swelling, we're gonna have that swelling in there. We can do all the stretching we want, but that swelling's in there, it's that, that joint's not gonna have the flexibility that it needs to and the movement that it needs to because the swelling's getting in the way, all right? So we need, then we need to look at you know, the quad. Is it tight? Is the hamstring tight? Is the hip flexor tight? Is it your foot that's messed up? You know, is that what's leading to it? Um, is it the weak, a weak foot? Um, and then most importantly, and a lot of times people get stuck on um, just going after symptoms. What I mean by that is they just keep going after stretching, foam rolling, stretching, foam rolling, stretching, foam rolling, and they just do that on repeat. And a lot of times people are like, I go in the gym and I spend more time stretching and foam rolling than I do actually working out because they feel like they have to do so much of this just to get the muscles in the right, um, you know, in the right tensile forces. What, what I mean by that is loosening up the muscles enough um, to be able to feel like you can move properly and do the movements, all right? 
um, and people get frustrated from having to do so much of that warm-ups. In reality, if they just treated the root cause and figure out why is this quad getting so tight, why is this IT band getting so tight, uh, why are these other, why is the hamstring getting so tight, then you won't have to do so much stretching. Uh, I get a lot of questions from my patients when they first come in, like, do I have to do these exercises the rest of my life? I'm like, well, it depends on the type of exercise. If you're just going to treat the symptom, go up to symptom, 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 and uh, just treat the tightness, yes, you will have to do these exercises the rest of your life. However, if you strengthen up the right muscles and figure out where your weaknesses are at, then it's much easier to maintain strength and you don't have to be doing so much mobility. You don't have to be doing as much direct strength training and corrective movements to maintain the changes that we've made. Okay, It's much easier to maintain strength than maintaining mobility. And I want That's one super um, important piece I want you guys to know and understand um, and take away from today is it's easy to maintain strength. It's hard to maintain mobility and, and whatnot if you're fighting an uphill battle of the muscles not being strong enough. Okay. Um, so strengthening usually tends to look like, you know, it depends on person to person. All, each one of you is different uh, with regards to where your strength and uh, weaknesses are. Some may, may have super strong glutes. It might actually be weakness of the, the hamstrings and the quads. Some of you guys may have super, you know, strong hamstrings and quads and have weak glutes. Everybody's a little bit different. Okay. So that's one thing I can't pinpoint over a video is where are these muscle imbalances at? Okay. Without doing a manual muscle test and muscle testing on you guys. Okay. Um, so treatment two is also weight loss. When we are running, we land with three to five times our body weight. Okay. And if we don't, and this is, and I love runners. My sister is a super competitive runner. Um, and she's actually getting, she was getting ready to, um, head to Denver to train for the Olympics, um, for running and, but with everything going on, that's been put on hold. Um, but she used to be the person that would, and this is how runners tend to be. And again, nothing against runners. I, I run too, just not as you know competitively as my sister, obviously. Um, but they just get in a mindset of run, 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 run. And that's all they do. They don't do any strength training. And when all you do is run, 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 you get muscle imbalances. Right. And a lot of times, like I said, you land with three to five times your body weight. Right? And if you don't have the strength built up through strength training, there's going to be breakdowns. Okay. Your body is not going to be able to withstand all that repetitive step after step, especially if you're putting you know, heavy mileage on, um, step after step, day in and day out with no strength training and no stability, it's going to lead to injuries and breakdowns. Okay. So it's super important, um, to strength train okay? and make sure you have the appropriate strength training that's targeting the, your weaknesses. Okay. Um, but yeah, back to weight loss. If we can decrease how much weight we're landing, you know, if we can just decrease one pound, okay, lose one pound of good, uh, good weight, then we're, that's less, three to five pounds less that's com being compressed down because it, the knee joint is one of the first joints that absorbs that contact. Okay. Um, and then also foot positioning. We need to, we talked about how important it is to look at below and above the joint. You know, we need to look at foot positioning. Do we have, do we have an improper arch? Is our arch not providing the stability it needs to? Is it weak? Is it tight? Is our ankles weak? Um, and whatnot too. Okay. A lot of times it's ankles that are responsible for the pain or tightness that we're experiencing or the pain or tightness we're experiencing in the knee joint. Okay. Um, I get a lot of questions about heat versus ice. What is best? Um, generally do whatever one feels best. However, traditionally, if we have an acute issue, we're going to use ice to decrease that swelling. If we have a tight muscle, usually tight muscles respond well to heat because it helps them relax. Okay. But bottom line, go to whatever makes you feel best. Okay. Um, another thing is knee braces. I see a lot of people need wear knee braces. Um, and reality, the only time I really encourage somebody to wear knee braces is that they're having excruciating pain, right? And they can't walk without it. Okay. Because when we wear braces, the braces are essentially just doing what our muscles are supposed to be doing. Okay. And when we wear the braces, the muscles that are already weak, get even weaker because they're not having to provide any stability because that knee braces. Okay. So I'm usually against knee braces unless, um, unless it's, you know, imperative and doesn't, and you're not able to, to, um, you know, walk or, or anything like that because of the pain. Um, and then secondly, if none of these things like self-treatment helps make out, make sure you seek out a medical professional, whether it's me, physical, another physical therapist, chiropractor, physician, make sure you seek somebody out that understands that's not just going to tell you, oh, just stop working out or stop running. Right. Um, that's, that's bull crap. All right. I'm pretty passionate about that. I've heard it over, all over and over and over again of patients that come in and it's like, this is my last, this is my last chance. You guys are my last chance. Um, because I've had so many other physicians 
um, just tell me that I need to stop working out. And a lot of other PTs that tell me to stop working out and running, and I'm just not accepting that, all right? As they shouldn't, okay? You should not accept that. There's so many solutions to this, okay? Um, all right, hopefully that makes sense, guys. All right, so before we get into the exercises today, um, do you guys have any other questions about anything or any of that information? All right, whether that's knee braces, whether it's heat versus ice, whether it's you know activity modification, running, um, or anything like that. Any questions on any of that, guys? All right. Okay. All right. So you guys can go ahead and you guys can follow along with me if you want. Um, you know, it's uh, this is also going to be you guys will be able to watch this on replay as well. Um, and you guys will also get an email with these exercises. You don't have to memorize these. Okay. These are going to be sent out. Um, over email where you have a link to a YouTube video uh, that we created that replicates exactly what I'm about to show you. All right, so don't worry about like, oh, taking notes, uh, you know, or anything like that. These will be sent out to you guys, okay? All right, so we talked about the knee, the knee joint, all right, and quad tightness. And based on what, again, I'm tailoring these exercises based on what you guys are telling me too. Um, and a lot of you guys, I think a lot of this is stemming from quad tightness. So we are gonna double down on that we're going to target a lot of the best exercise to release that quad and um, get you guys feeling better there too. Okay. So the best way to loosen up muscles is a combination of foam rolling and stretching initially. All right. So let's go over um, the foam rolling. Okay. And make sure you guys are doing the foam rolling correctly. All right. Because that's something I see done incorrectly a lot, not necessarily incorrectly. It's just, they're not getting as much the full benefit out of things as they could be. All right. So are you guys, let me go ahead and again, I don't claim to be a video director here. Let's make sure you guys can see. All right. Okay. Looks like you're able to see that. Okay. Perfect. All right. So what you're going to do is you're going to grab a foam roller. If you don't have a foam roller, you could do is you could uh, use like a, a water bottle that's filled up with ice and frozen. All right. Um, what we're going to do. I'm going to turn this around so you guys can see a little bit better here. So you're going to grab the foam roller, and you're going to go ahead and place that on the front part of your thighs. Okay. So that quad muscle is a large muscle. It's not just right here. Okay. It kind of spans out here. Quad stands for four. Okay. There's four muscles that make up the quadricep muscle. It comes on the inside here, all the way up, and on the outside, and then the middle. I see a lot of people where they just foam roll, and they just get the middle part. They're really missing. They're only really getting a third of that quad muscle. All right, so how do we get those other portions of the quad? So first of all, to get the middle part, just keep your toes pointed straight down, okay? And again, make sure you're going nice and slow. All right, I see a lot of people go way too fast through this and that's not gonna make much of a difference. All right, go nice and slow there. All right, and then the one thing you can do too to get the inside of the quad is kind of bring your knees, your legs out and then point your toes out, okay? That's gonna hit the inside of the quad. Okay. And then you can also get the inside or the outside of the quad by pointing your toes in. Okay. A lot of you, especially if you have a lot of quad tightness, this can be pretty intense um, just from doing two legs like this. However, if you want to make it more intense, you can cross one leg over the other. Okay. And roll like this. Okay. You can also kind of go up like this and roll out the lateral or the outside part of the quad, okay? So there's another technique that's a little bit more aggressive, okay? So use at your own caution. And again, these should, these actually, none of these exercises should be painful. It should be kind of like a hurt so good type of thing, okay? Especially with the foam rolling, the stretcher should not be painful. Again, I'm about to show you too, okay? So like what I want you guys to do is roll around and find uh, kind of like a knot or a an area that's really kind of tender um, and what I'm going to do, or what you're going to do, is once you find that spot, so like right now, I found a spot that's pretty tight on my right quad. What I'm going to do from there is I'm just going to pause in that spot, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend that knee, okay, nice and slow, and then straighten that back out. And I'm just going to do about, I ideally do about 10 of these, just for time purposes, I'm not going to do the full 10, all right? Um, but what this is doing is when we pin and we find that tight knot, Right? And we pin down that foam roller. As we bend that knee, it's lengthening and shortening 
that quad tendon. And as we bend it and that muscle lengthens and shortens, it rolls it over the top of that foam roller, okay? Just that exact spot, all right? And it helps release it and break up that tissue and that tightness, okay? Again, that's a little bit more intense way of doing it, but um, a lot of you guys will find benefit from that, okay? So I know a lot of you guys are probably working from home and a lot of you are sitting quite a bit throughout the day, all right? Before I move on to the next exercise, um, also comment if you guys have questions about the foam roller one before I move on, okay? Um, while, I do, while I wait for the questions to come in, I'm gonna kind of explain what we're gonna do next. Um, we're gonna, next we're gonna stretch the hip flexor. So the hip flexor muscle, um, and we're also gonna stretch part of the quad as well, all right? When we sit for a long period of time, that hip flexor muscle is in a shortened position. The hip flexor attaches from here to here. And what it does is when we go in a sitting position, now it's in a shortened position, okay? And so if we're spending, you know, six to eight hours a day uh, sitting, that quad, because that quad also attaches up there too, that gets tight and that hip flexor gets quite tight and it can manipulate our knee joint as well, okay? So we're gonna, I'm gonna show you guys how to stretch that, okay? Um, so you guys don't necessarily need a foam roller for this, Right, but you, I like to use one just for kind of balance purposes. So what you're gonna do, so you're gonna get a half kneeling position. And you guys can, if so, I know so a lot of you guys are having some pain underneath the kneecap. If you are having that pain, make sure you put a pillow or something soft underneath the knee, okay? What we're gonna do is we're gonna bring our right leg up, okay? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna squeeze this glute, squeeze the glute, contract the core, pull the rib cage down, and then we're shifting our hips forward. We should feel a pretty intense stretch kind of on the front side of our hip flexor here, okay? Ideally, stretches are hold for about 30 seconds, three sets, okay? That's not just for this stretch in particular, this is for any stretch. That's what the, re that's the research shows is best um, for the time duration, okay? So I do 30 seconds here, and then do the exact same thing on the other side as well. That's one question I get a lot too is, um, should I just be stretching the, the side that's hurting? No, you should be stretching both, okay? Because before you know it, you're gonna create imbalances, right? You're gonna be playing a game of catch up, okay? So again, squeeze my right, whatever knee's down, my right knee's down, I'm gonna squeeze my right glute, pull the rib cage down, and I'm shifting my hips forward. Should feel a pretty good stretch right here, okay? All right, and again, these are painful, stop. Should not be painful. All right, so now for the most important exercise, in my opinion, that's gonna give most of you guys uh, relief is the quad stretch, okay? Um, make sure you guys don't have any questions that came up while I was jibber jabbering. All right, all right, awesome, no questions there. Um, how'd you guys do with that one? Did, any, did anybody have pain or anything? Or any questions on that? Okay, not seeing any questions or anybody had pain with that, which is great. Okay, awesome, all right. So let's go over to the quad stretch. So what you guys can do is you could use, so I have, I have that box there. I know a lot of you guys probably don't have a box like that, okay, and it's not required, um, it's just what I had available. Uh, what you can do is this is, you could use your couch. Um, you could place your leg up on the couch or you could place your leg up on a chair. Um, and what we're gonna do, it's very similar to that hip flexor stretch. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna kneel down like this, okay? And put our leg back here, all right? And then this knee down. And again, we're squeezing the right glute, pulling the rib cage down and shifting our hips forward. We should feel a pretty intense stretch here, okay? That's gonna, instead of up here on like the last one, it's gonna be a little bit lower. This is gonna be hitting that quad, okay? And try and relax as much as possible. Okay, keep the torso upright. See a lot of people that lean here. That's gonna take tension off the quad, all right? The reason this targets the quad more just by bending that knee is because we gotta remember back to the anatomy portion that that quad comes down and attached to that knee joint. So when we have that bent, it, it kind of stretches or elongates that, that quad muscle, okay? All right, I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Right, I'm squeeze, so I got my left knee down, I'm squeezing my left glute, pulling the rib cage down, and then I'm shifting my hips forward. 
Okay, keep that torso upright. One thing you can do too is instead of counting for 30 seconds, you could uh, take six deep breaths by focus on your breathing. You help, it helps the entire body relax as well as the muscle, the quad muscle. Okay, if we can get our muscles relaxed, then we're, it's gonna stretch more effectively. Okay? Ideally foam rolling first to help kind of increase the blood flow. Um, before stretches is gonna be more optimal, okay, if possible, but it's not imperative that you do. That's just how you can maximize the stretch. All right, okay. So Anita says, very little mobility when tightening my glutes, okay? Yes, so that's what missing piece I see a lot of people that they don't do is they forget to squeeze, they don't squeeze that glute. And when they don't squeeze that glute, it allows that hip to move more freely. It doesn't lock it in place and it doesn't make the stretch, you won't feel as much of a stretch. So good, I'm glad you're able to, you were able to get some, a good stretch with that. Um, gotta hop over to me, but thank you so much. This workshop has been immensely helpful. Absolutely, Monica. Sorry, we're kind of running a little bit uh, over. I just wanna make sure we ask, answer all of you guys' questions. But yeah, I'm, I'm super help, glad that you got uh, benefit out of this, and Monica and, and whatnot too. So thank you for coming. Um, what are your thoughts on doing a quad stretch without a box on the ground? Yes, Joshua, that's, that's perfect too. Um, so if the reason, so I will show you guys what Josh is talking about, and it's a very, very good point. Um, let's see if, so this is a little bit too high for me. Let's see if we can do it. So what Josh is saying is you could, so again, this is a little bit high. What you could do is place it up on elevated, elevated surface like this and stretch as well. All right. So this one is infective and it's good. The good thing about this one is it does offload the knee. However, a lot of times people have a hard time relaxing into that muscle. We just talked about how important it is to be able to relax this quad muscle. A lot of times people will put too much weight on the, this back leg. And what that's gonna do is it's actually gonna cause that quad to contract. And so a lot of times people aren't able to get that full relaxation of the quad. So when they don't get that full relaxation of the quad, then they, they're not able to effectively target and stretch the quad, right? Because it's contracting. Um, however, if you can do, if you do that and you feel like a good stretch, right? That's perfect. I'm totally okay with that, right? Um, especially if it's painful to kneel down or you don't have a pillow or anything to offload the knee, you can do that stretch. But great question, Joshua. Absolutely. Right. Any other questions, guys? Let me pull up my slides here. We're about, we're about wrapping up here, guys. Just bear with me. I know we covered a lot of information and run a little bit over. Um, just wanna make sure we answer all those questions. Um, let me pull up the slides. All right, guys. So yeah, that pretty much uh, follow up. What about quad stretches on the ground? Yeah. So Joshua, that that one we just went over. That's that's a that's a quad stretch. Okay, the, the quad stretch that you can do on do on the ground. Okay, yeah, that's there's that's yeah. In my opinion, that's the best that's the best quad stretch you can do on the on the ground. You could also do it like side lying, like laying on your side and doing the same thing, okay? Um, if that's what you're referring to, um, that's something that's possible, right? There's a large variety of quad stretches. Um, the one, in my opinion, and what the research shows too, is this is the best type of quad stretch, the one where we're kneeling down. However, you can also do it laying on the ground like this, where you're pulling the leg back and do it like this. So if you get a stretch like that, you can do it. Um, but I, the only thing is when I, when I see people do that, I see it done kind of incorrectly too, is they start kind of like looping their leg up and trying to go back and it kind of throws off that position. So like here, you want to ideally keep here. Okay, just see, I see a lot of, there's a lot of variations. A lot of people mess this up. So I usually don't give this one to people. That one's usually most straightforward and people can get the most intense stretch. And a lot of times people can, just get fatigued too from having to hold their leg and pull their leg back. That makes sense. Okay, perfect. That's what I was referring to. Yes, perfect, good. But yeah, you can do that one too, Joshua. That one's great. All right. Um, all right. Okay, guys. So yeah, we'll go and we'll we'll wrap up here um, and leave it open up to open up completely to questions. So if you guys have any, do you guys have any questions about the stretches, um, foam rolling, any of the anatomy, any pain that we're that you guys are having or anything like that. Um, but like I said earlier, you know, in the workshop, 
luckily there is a solution to all this and a solution we've helped hundreds of people find. Um, you know, for example, we had a patient that had been to his doctor and a handful of PT and chiropractors that, that didn't really seem to help. Um, everyone kept telling him that he needed to rest and take time off. And they kind of just gave him a cookie cutter exercises. Um, he could have just been doing at home in my opinion. Um, he then turned because that wasn't working. He then turned to, uh, YouTube videos and kind of went down that rabbit hole and, uh, did every exercise on his son that claimed to be, you know, the best exercise for knee pain. And he found us through a workshop just like this and, and ended up scheduling an evaluation, um, afterwards. And it turns out it wasn't even really his knee. That was the issue. The problem was in his hips and his ankles, like we talked about earlier. Um, and then after running and squatting video analysis, we found out his technique was off as well. Um, with both running and squatting. Um, anyways, we worked on his ankle and hip mobility and actually didn't even touch his knee um, and cleaned up his squat and running for him. In just two sessions, he was pain-free. Uh, he continued to work with us for a few more sessions afterwards, and uh, he was able to increase his squat max by, I think it was like 45 or 50 pounds, and just by cleaning up his squat for him and fixing his biomechanics with it. Then he also shaved off a few times or a few seconds off his uh, mile time, and uh, now he's running and squatting pain-free and um, stronger than ever. So I want you guys to, you know, envision and uh, what your life would look like um, or what it could be like if you didn't have this pain and could exercise and work out the way that you wanted. Um, how different would you feel right now if you could be like the person the story I just told? Uh, think back to earlier in the workshop about your response to how this pain is impacting, you know, your everyday life and, and what you're not able to do because of it. Um, I want to give you guys an opportunity to um, to get this relief, uh, we've helped hundreds of people overcome knee pain and get back to running, squatting, and working out pain-free. And over this time of working with people just like you, we've learned that there's like a pattern to solving this knee pain. Um, our time figuring out these, these patterns led us to creating our knee health and performance program. Um, and here's kind of how the program works. Uh, we go through, the first session we go through a current and previous injury analysis, ankle, knee, and hip alignment screen. Put you through a full body biomechanical assessment and then also do a squat and running video analysis um, or whatever exercise that you're having pain with whether that's uh, the lunge lateral lunges forward lunges and come up with a prescribed plan of care from there um, and i know what you're thinking you just don't know uh, if this will work for me i don't have the time or money right now i don't think physical therapy is what you know, i need to solve my problems and that's fine but i'm going to turn this back to you know how long are you willing to tolerate this because it's not going it's most likely not just going to go magically away on its own um, I hear this all the time from patients when they're done with physical therapy with us. I wish I wouldn't have waited so long to do this. I missed out on so much looking back and never really realized how much pain I was in and how much this was affecting my everyday life. Um, and you're probably wondering, like, how much does this cost? So to get the current and previous injury analysis, the ankle, knee, hip alignment screen, and the full body biomechanical assessment, and the squat and running video analysis, and come up with a pre uh, prescribed plan of care from there, it's typically 225. However, if you schedule today, um, you receive 50% off and get all of this for just 112. All right. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop. Uh, if you guys are interested in taking advantage of this, you guys can go. I'm going to drop a link um, in the comments here. You guys can go ahead and um, fill out this form. And what I'll do is I'll what I do before we actually have anybody come in is I'm not, I'm not here to waste your guys' time. If I can't, if what we do is we hop on a 15 minute phone call figure out, you know, is this something that you guys actually need to come in for, or is this something that's a very easy fix? And I can just send over, you know, two or three, two or three other exercises that are more targeted to you. Um, and you should be able to get pain relief. And then if you're not, then you can come see us. Um, but if it's more sinister and something that's, you know, uh, requires a little bit more attention, um, then we'll, we'll decide if it's, you know, if it's warranted that you come in for, um, for the assessment and subsequent treatment, um, or not too. All right. So, you can fill out that form and then I'll reach out um, here probably in the next, um, probably by the end of the day um, uh, to, to get hop on that phone call with you guys and see if we can get, uh, see if we can get you out of some pain and, and get you back to running and get back to squatting and get back to, back to working out pain free again. Okay. So like I said, um, you know, this isn't something that you guys need to need to be dealing with and this is totally fixable. All right. Um, this is something we specialize in. All right. Um, so how, Anita is asking, how are you dealing with the coronavirus stuff and getting therapy? I like the idea of getting help. So Anita, this is, we're doing a couple different things. So 
we are doing both in person as well as virtual. So when the, the shelter in place was given, we contacted Alameda Health Department as well as the California Board of Physical Therapy uh, to determine, you know, what should we be doing? Should we be staying open? Should we be closing? And they both encouraged us to stay open um, as this decreases the amount of musculoskeletal issues that are coming into, uh, you know, primary care physician offices, the ER, and allows them uh, more time to actually uh, help uh, patients that are experiencing symptoms of COVID. Um, so we are still open to seeing patients in person. Um, some precautions that we're taking is we're both, we're both the patient and the, P the physical therapist are both wearing masks. Um, and then on top of that, we do uh, screening. If, you know, if somebody we make sure that nobody that's coming in has been exposed to somebody that's um, experiencing uh, COVID symptoms or they're experiencing any flu-like symptoms or anything like that, um, and really kind of screening patients uh, and then we're also staggering our appointment times where we have 15 minute gaps in between each patient to decrease the patient to patient interaction. Um, a little bit that's different than us and most physical therapy practices. We're not a mill type practice. We're not, you're not gonna be, we, not, it's not, we're, most traditional PTs, you go in and see a PT and they're treating three or four patients at the same time. We're not like that. Every single session is one-on-one -on -one with a PT. Um, we're in a 7,000 square foot facility and there's most of the time there, well, most of the time, it's just going to be you and the physical therapist in here, whether it's me, Dr. Mike, or Dr. Colin. Um, very rarely are there two PTs in at once even, right? So the most people that are in a 7,000 square foot facility is four people, and there it's big enough facility that we don't even have to be, and we can be well outside of six feet um, from interaction with other patients and, and PTs as well. Um, so we're trying to stagger the appointment times and whatnot too to decrease how much interaction there is um, between the PT schedules and patient schedule as well. Um, but yeah, we're also, if the patient isn't comfortable doing that, um, then we are also doing virtual um, sessions, which are just as helpful and just as beneficial um, and, and whatnot too. And a lot of people actually have started with, they about six weeks ago, yeah, we've had a few people that started about six to eight weeks ago, kind of when this all started um, and we're having pain and they did all virtual and they're already done with PT. And we didn't even see them in person once. Um, and they're back to running, they're back to squatting, they're back to uh, lunging, they're back to, um, back to everything they want to be doing uh, without restriction as well. So um, just as effective as well. So it's up to, up to you guys and, and, uh, and what you prefer as well. So hopefully that kind of answers your question, Anita. All right, any other questions or anything before we wrap up, guys? Get about another minute or two for them to come in. I think there's kind of a lag too between what I'm saying and then also um, what's on Facebook Live here as well. All right. All right, guys. All right, yeah, so thanks for explaining the process. I'll fill out the form. Okay, awesome. Great, Anita. I'm glad that I uh, answered your questions and, and makes sense and whatnot too. So. Um, but yeah, Kelly, you're more than welcome. Glad this was helpful. Um, and Jessica, yep, thanks for the information. Very helpful. Yeah, you are more than welcome too, Jessica. Thank you for attending. And um, I'll also be sending out the replay here. Um, how long do I have to make these exercises before starting? I'm not, Renee, I'm not sure what the, how long do I have to make these exercises before starting again? Oh, uh, so if what you're asking is like how often to be doing these, ideally just once or twice a day and then just doing on repeat, okay? As long as it's not painful. Absolutely, Sean, you are more than welcome. Thanks for coming, all right? And then, yeah, I'll be sending these exercises to your guys' email um, afterwards as well. That should, I should be able to get that to you guys by, um, by the end of the day, if no later than tomorrow, I'll have that to you guys, okay? And if you guys have questions, you can give us a call. Um, you can also um, email me as well, um, or just respond back to that email. All right, Joshua. So thank you. Sounds like you're doing great work. Keep it up. Thanks, Joshua. I appreciate that. Yep, we're doing we're doing our best to, um, you know, keep everybody pain free. Because that's another thing too is you know just because uh, there's a pandemic and COVID's going around doesn't mean that you know people's pain magically goes away. All right, um, you know that's pain's pain still there, and a lot of times people are a lot of people are running more than um, than they're used to and um, they're sitting more than they're used to and this leads to a lot of issues too. So um, I appreciate that feedback, Joshua. Kate, you are welcome. Great questions. Thank you for, for your awesome input and your questions as well, Kate. I'm sure it's helped a lot of other people too that had similar questions. 
Um, Renee, yep, you're welcome. Susie, thank you. Yep, absolutely, guys. So glad you guys found this helpful. And we'll also be doing um, future workshops in the, uh, probably next week or the week after that, targeting low back pain um, or shoulder pain. And if you guys have any uh, suggestions on topics you'd like us to include, um, go ahead and uh, you can just direct message me or a private message me and be like, hey, Ben, I'd like, Dr. Ben, I'd like to talk about this topic. You know, I'd like, I'm having some shoulder pain. Can we talk about this? I'm having a little back pain. Can we talk about this? I'm having shin splints. Can we talk about this? You know, it's flexible. I want this to be targeted to you guys and what you're going to find beneficial. All right. Um, but yeah, if any questions come up, uh, feel free to reach out. And you can also put in the comments too. If you have questions, just make sure you tag my name um, so I can see that. All right, guys. Um, yeah, I'm going to hop off here, but I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your sun or your Wednesday. Sorry, I'm, as you can tell, my brain's just mush and uh, all the days are kind of blending together now. So, um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your Wednesday and then I will see you guys in a week or two if you tune into uh, the other workshops. All right, bye guys.